I uh, didn't do this right. The tendency of us is we cover up our sin instead of confessing it. Now I say this pretty often. You don't have to tell me about anything that you've ever done. You don't have to come to me and confess your sins. I didn't see them, didn't know about them. It's none of my business. But it is the Lord's business. Now, if you're not doing right about something in the church, then it might be something you need to deal with with the church. But if it has to do with your, 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 your something out here, and the Holy Ghost convicts you about it and shows you this, you confess it before the Lord. He that covers the sin shall not prosper, and whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. They confessed that they had sinned against the Lord. Not only do I find there was a chastening, but there was a confession. There was also a, these things about his intimate prayer life, it's serious, it's sacrificial. There was a calling or crying before the Lord. In, the, in verse number 8 of chapter 7, And the children of Israel said, unto, or said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the land or out of the hand of the Philistines. It should be passionate. A calling out to God. When we pray for one another, there should be effectual and fervent prayer. A crying out. You and I should not pray just well God. Just so and so has a burden over there. And so I you know they got a burden. If they if you see fit to take care of that, I you know, that'd be alright with me. Man. If you need something, if you want something, wouldn't you go to somebody with a little bit more passion than that? If your car is broke down on the side of the road and you you call a record driver, hey, yeah, well, you call them and say, yeah, if you ever get a chance one of these days, we're, we're over here broke down on Cold Scott Street. <laughs> And can, if you can make it down here on Cold Scott and pick us up, that'd be a blessing, you know, if you can fix the car. But if you can't, hey. <laughs> no, we call them and say, hey, listen, I, I, I need you. If you if, 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 I need you to come here. Can you come here? I mean, I watched it last night or yesterday afternoon at a baseball game. Uh, one of the players' dad had to leave. Why? Because his wife was broke down alongside the road. She didn't call him and say, oh. Hey, will not y'all just wait a while? And, hey, if you ever get around here, <laughs> I can't picture that. She called and told her her need and said, as soon as you can get to it, I know you're busy doing something, but as soon as you can get to it, I need you to take it. Can, can we take care of this? Isn't that how you do it? Is that not how you do it? Yes. I mean, if, if you really got a burden about something, they've got a burden hear about their need to be saved out of the hand of the Philistines. Don't quit praying about it. That's what they asked him. Please don't. We need you. Let me say, there was gratefulness in his prayer though. In verse number 12 of chapter 7, after he's over there praying and they pursued the Philistines, he didn't just say, and they whooped them. And uh, they didn't just stop there. But he says in 
Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and, and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Gratefulness, chapter 7, verse number 12 of 1 Samuel. When God does answer prayer, you and I ought to be grateful, thankful. When He answered prayer about Uncle Leo, hey, I, I said, Woo! Hallelujah. We pray, God answered. Did we not say thank you, Brother Johnny? We said, thank you. Are we going to be intercessors for people? Will we be serious in our prayer life? Do we believe it is a serious matter and that you and I have a responsibility to pray one for another? We're expected to pray. You say, why should we pray? Well, number one, the people desire people to pray for them. How many people have you ever heard tell you, will you pray for me about this? They want you to pray for them. They want you to know their burdens so that you can bring them to the Lord for them. Now, some people want you to know the burdens just so you can feel sorry for them. But you know what? Christians want other people to know I've got something going on because I need you to pray about this. Now you don't need to tell me what somebody else has got going on so I can pray for them just so I can know about their business. I'm not, you, you, you can tell me as generally as you need to, as you can, about somebody else's business. If they, they want me to know about it, especially if somebody that if, if what I know could affect the way I think about the person. I mean, if, if I came up to you and said, Oh, Brother Jerry over here. Oh, no, I ain't going to use Brother Jerry because I am not going to lie about Brother Jerry. But if I was to say, let's say, Brother James. Oh, Brother James, he's having a real problem with... Uh, He's been stealing money from work. And y'all pray for him about that. Wait a minute. What do you think about Brother James now? In your mind, you think Brother James is now the thief. Which he is. But now how are you going to get that picture out of your mind even when he gets right with his business, gives him the monies back, how are you going to get that out of your mind? For the rest of, for a long time, you're going to be thinking, bro, James is a thief. But if I told you, old brother James over here is having some issues and they're serious matters, would you just pray for him? Need to know. Y'all ever heard that statement? Need to know? We used to do in the military. The reason you don't tell somebody something, they don't have a need to know. You don't need to know everything. So you pray. The people desire you to pray. In 1 Samuel 12, verse 19, And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not, for we have added unto all our sins this evil to ask a king. Pray for us. Not only do the people desire intercession, but God demands intercession. He demands it. Let me give you this last thing. Over in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, he says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all those that are in authority 
that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. God demands that we pray for those in authority. We know that we have no kings in the United States of America. That's supposed to be the truth. Some people think we do have kings. We have the Burger King <laughs> and we have the Dairy Queen. Right? Oh man. So we got kings and queens in the United States of America and sometimes I think they are ruling America. <coughs> because our God is our belly many a times. But that's beside the point. That's the that one. Uh, but we don't have kings and queens in the United States. But the idea is that those who are in leadership positions, our governor, Governor Holcomb, our president, Mr. Trump, our vice president, Mr. Pence, our senator, uh, Senator Donnelly and Senator Young, or the, ones that, the other ones you might know that are senators that are leading. Uh, I mean, the Secretary of State and uh, forget Secretary of State's name. What? Huh? It was Rex Tillerson. It was Rex Tillerson. But now it's we don't have one. Pompeo. I yeah, Pompeo is supposed to be, isn't he? We're going to be? Yes. Did he make it? Yes. Okay. So, and then you know you got all these people that are in these leadership positions. Congressman Messer, who is not going to be our congressman after next year, after this year. Um, but he's our, our congressman now. I mean, you know, and so we got, then we got our people that work in the state. Uh, Mr. Eberhard, and, you know, who's our, uh, and then I'm praying for the man who's running for, uh, as a Republican against him. I'm praying for Luke Campbell, who's running. If he becomes the next representative, uh, our senator, state for a state, uh, here, Gene Lysing, who's our senator. I mean, pray for these people. Governor Holcomb. Pray for the mayor. We've already mentioned him. Pray for your Those in authority. Pray for them. Why? God demands it. He demands intercessions. He may demands giving a thanks. Now, I do complain to my senators and my congressmen. Amen. But I make a point to give thanks to them also. You say, why? First of all, I thank them for serving. It might be $170,000, but when they have to hear from people all the time on how they ought to do their job, <laughs> people griping and complaining sometimes, and that's most of the calls that people get is calls griping. I let them know I'm praying for you. I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful that you took this position. He said, what are you talking about? Giving thanks, intercession, prayer for those in authority. That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Father, I pray you'd help us.